Brother Dan graciously asked me last night after the 10 o'clock hour to uh, see if I can fill in for his class. And I was a bit concerned about my family situation, but I felt the Lord brings things into your path, so you should be always be ready. And I texted him back and says, I'm ready if you need me, and um, we'll get as prepared as we can be. Well, it is a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? And um, we're trusting you coming expecting this morning, expecting great things, that God will do great and mighty things in and through each of you. Um, we do have a lot of announcements this morning in your bulletin. If you um, uh, take the time to review that, I will go over those announcements with you at the end. But um, I will ask uh, Linda, when she's through preparing the baby food there, to give us an update on Brother Lee. But I would like you to give, a, give you an update on Brother Ron Fisher. Um, I was able to visit with him this week and spend some time with, in prayer with him. He's certainly missing his wife and wanting to be with her and um, just very concerned for her well-being. And he asked us to um, pray for her. And uh, he is desperately desiring to be home with her and get through his rehab in the time he has there at Eagle Lake Nursing Home. Um, Brother Leet might have mentioned that to you. He's at the Eagle Lake on 66th Street, 1100 numbers on 66th Street. Um, we had a wonderful time of prayer. He's very appreciative of visitors and um, spending time in prayer with him. He was having his meal when I popped in, and he seems like he is doing very well with that. So he's eating well. That's good. Um, Linda, would you be able to give us an update on Brother Ralph? I, I'm not sure if everybody's heard, but um, Sunday night we were here in church and um, Ralph was experiencing some chest pains and um, he, he goes through this often where he, you know, gets chest pains and it's not anything, but this time he started sweating and had a hard time breathing and stuff. So um, we took, he went out in the back and the wonderful thing about, about this is every, everybody that we needed was right here in the church. You know, we had people who um, had nitro pills. We had people who were in the medical profession. We had EMS people here, but they all decided that it would be best for the ambulance to be called. So they called the ambulance. They took him to St. Um, Anthony's Hospital. And uh, he had a heart cath on Monday. And um, good news, because they were in and out with the heart cath. Um, no significant problems. He has a little bit of a blockage from um, before, but they said that um, as far as they could tell, it hasn't increased at all. So it's probably just, you know, his schedule. He needs to, you know, slack off on some stuff. And right now is crazy because of uh, his uh, schooling. So continue to pray for his schooling, and he'll be done August 11th. So, um, uh, and of course, with two babies in the house, <laughs> that adds a lot of extra work, too, in his work schedule on top of all that. So, but he's doing good. Um, preacher kind of put his foot down and said, you need to stay home. Don't worry about anything today. So he's home resting. So. But we do appreciate all your prayers. The cards that you have sent, um, you know, it, it's funny because we're, as your Sunday school teacher, Ralph and I want to try to help minister to you. But since we've had this class, it feels like you guys have ministered to us. And it, it, is, it is a blessing. All the prayers, all the cards, all the gifts, um, not only with Ralph being in the hospital and in his schooling, but with the process of AJ and his adoption, you guys have been very, very, very good with us, to us. And I wanted to take this time out to say thank you to each one of you, because you all mean you're very special to us. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. And I, I, I very much can relate to Ralph's stress. Um, <laughs> if, if I can say a little bit about uh, where we are in our family, many of you have heard that my mom went home to be uh, two months ago. She passed away actually today. And uh, at this crossroad, we're dealing with my father-in-law in the same position. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the offering. Um, but uh, it's been quite stressful. Our son is undergoing chemotherapy treatment for his uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma treatment. And he had a brief five-day hospital stay also as a result of that. So it's been kind of topsy-turvy. I felt those chest pains myself, and my doctor said, you need to back off a little bit also. So good, I've listened to good counsel. Thankfully, I didn't have to have pastor come and put his foot down. But uh, a true servant, sometimes the pastor have to do that to them, tell them to stop. And that's, uh, in, that's what you find in Ralph. Um, I may be different in format this morning, so bear with me. Um, uh, just to share a few things, um, we've had some tragedy in our country and our nations recently uh, in the past few days with this terrible situation that's been unfolding, in, uh, that has unfolded in Colorado. And our hearts and prayers need to be with those folks up there um, and to keep them in our, our, our prayers. Um, and I'm sure that many of you have prayer needs. Um, if you desire to share some of that, we can lift that up in prayer before we start. Um, is there anyone that uh, have a prayer need or praise that wants to share? Yes, sir. Unspoken. Anyone else? Um, Tina? Thyroid. Okay. Anyone else? Deanna? Wow. Oh, wonderful. Praise God that they are both doing well. And um, is God getting enough sleep or anything? He's not here. <laughs> well, I thought maybe Deanna might get enough sleep, but uh, Kev? Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes, the way we live our lives and the events that the, we have in our lives is a testimony. I can, you know, being involved in my mom's funeral, she is a Hindu um, raising and um, was part of all of that, but simply had to separate myself from it, but still be there and support. Well, and we're going to do the same thing with my father-in-law when, when his turn comes. We'll have to separate ourselves, but be present and supportive of our families. And then that way, we hope to minister Christ to them, that our lives are different because of Christ. So anyone else would like to share? Ralph, Dave? I'm sorry? Uh -huh. He's home. Uh -huh. OK, infections. Okay. Anyone else, if you would? Yes, sir. Amen. Well, I count it a privilege and honor. Someone else? Uh, yes, Danny. Sue, uh, Johnson. Um, physical, spiritual, material. Uh, and uh, Tammy, Van, Tammy uh, Hendrickson. Hendrickson. Uh, he's got four-stage cancer. Wow. And he, he's not going to make it, but he needs spiritual. Spiritual. 
Thank you. Hey, Amen. Okay. Um, we also uh, had this week, if you happen to have been here, um, it was a, I don't know if there's a word that can describe it. I mean, I just stand in awe of what was unfolding here this week. It was pretty exciting. Um, VBS, this place was packed out with kids and they were roaring. I think they, I, I'm certain they got the message because I'll, I'll tell you this, Tuesday when we started the bus route, you, you see the, 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 the reaction of the kids. On Friday, it was different. It was completely different. Everybody sat in their seat, they listened, they spoke kindly to each other. It was different. And I think whatever was done here, I'm certain has been making a difference. Now, you know, we wish we can have them five days a week and we can keep the positive message in their life. But imagine when we leave get them one day a week for a few hours and then we let them back into the world for six days and the world influences them and then we come back and we try to redo that again. It's hard when you have to keep retraining them, retraining them, retraining them. And if you can just get them here five to seven days a week or more, what an awesome job it would be and an awesome change of life. Um, I think what Pastor shared about that young lady um, is so profound because uh, we're losing our kids. We're losing our kids left, right, and center. Um, similar situation uh, that I was involved in in a young lady's life that, um, not me, but my family, um, that uh, she ended up in a very similar situation. If you remember the Hiccup Girl, well, that young lady became uh, part of a violent act that killed someone eventually, and she's now in prison. Um, Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer for these things and be thankful for, again for uh, the VBS uh, that we've had here, if you would join me. Precious Lord, we thank you today. We thank you, God, first, that you are God of our life. And Father, you've called each of us, Lord God, to be faithful and to be good servants to you, Lord. We pray, Father God, in our words or actions, Lord God, would be encouraging. Father, that we would uh, build up each other, Lord God, encourage each other. Father, where there is a need that we'll seek to fill it, Lord God, that there is always a need for prayer and praise. And Father, for those that have special needs today, Lord God, we lift up first our brother Ralph. We ask you, Lord God, to comfort him, Lord God, to touch his body and heal him, Lord God, where it needs healing. Father, to encourage him, Lord God, as he goes through these days, Lord God, of um, surmountable challenges, Lord God, with changes in his life, um, getting his uh, college work done, and Father, that um, these things can be overwhelming at some times. But we pray, Father, that you would comfort him. We pray, Lord God, that you would sustain him and Linda, and for the little, for the babies, Lord God, for AJ and the, the new baby, Lord God, that um, all will be well, Lord God, in the, in, in very short term. Lord, and we pray for Dave's dad also. We pray, Father, for continued healing in his life, for this infections that is um, inflicting his body, Lord God, that, um, that the treatment, whatever the doctors and nurses are doing, Lord God, would help him to return to good health. We pray for, uh, for Danny's friend, Lord God, for Timmy Hendrickson, for his, um, his cancer situation. And um, he asks for prayer for Bob and Sue Johnson, Lord God. We pray, Father, for them. Um, pray, Father, for our unsaved families that are close to us, Lord God. Sometimes we look far and beyond, Lord God, and miss those that are close to us. Help us, Lord God, to not lose sight of those that are dear and most important to us, Lord God. That we will tell them about Jesus, we will tell them what he has done in our life, and we'll testify, Lord God, with our voices and our mouths, Lord God. Lord, we um, pray for Tina's daughter, Melissa, as she gets her, her um, lab results. Pray, Father, that all of that would be good for Deanna's new grandbaby, Lord God, that you would make her a blessing in their life, Lord God. And, Father, for the many unspoken prayers, Lord God, if we desire that you bless, we desire that you heal, we desire that you touch today. Father, make this a blessed day as we come expecting great and mighty things in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if you allow me, I'll just lose this jacket before you lose me.
Okay. Um, if you would turn with, your, with me in Bibles to the book of First Chronicles, chapter 29. And I will read verses 10 through 13. This is uh, after David had uh, commenced his son Solomon to build his temple um, to house the Ark of the Covenant. Um, in verse 10 it reads, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. King David, leading up to this point, had made all the preparation to build the Lord's temple and had charged the building to his son Solomon. He had brought the council into assembly where he announced his desire to build this temple, to rest the Ark of the Covenant. Today, we are, I think what we want to look at is exalting God. Um, so often we get into praise and we get into the routine of worship. And we miss those times when we can just raise our hands, close our eyes, and think heavenly, think of God only, and us with Him. Um, I think exalting God is so important to us that we, we need to separate ourselves sometimes and just think of our relationship one on one with Him. Um, we praise God, we say, praise God, we'll pray for you, we'll, we refer to God in so many ways, and sometimes we take it cavalierly. I, I remember, used to see a lot of bumper stickers, you don't see them now so often, where after 9-11, you see a lot of, God bless America, God bless this, but does people put those stickers, do they really think of what it means? I have one of the bumper stickers from the church, on the top of my windshield. I don't like bumper stickers, so I put it in the windshield. Um, one nation under God. And I oftentimes would see that in my rearview mirror, and it makes you think. One nation under God. There's no point putting it somewhere where it doesn't, make, it doesn't affect you. It has to affect you as you expect it to affect those around you. Um, but we have to keep God at the center of everything we do and exalt him in our way. Um, there are several songs that are not necessarily out of the hymn books, but they do exalt God. Um, yeah, and many of you have heard some of those in Christian radios and things like that, that you know, brings you into a place of worship. Um, the definition to exalt God, of course, uh, is to praise and praise with exceeding joy. I can praise anybody, I can say praise God, and go away with the, the same expression on my face. But if my countenance doesn't change when I say praise God, I really haven't exalted God. It needs to affect me. It also means to glorify, honor, magnify, praise, dignify, to extol God. Um, we all have prayer time, and sometimes we find we're just a prayer. It can be a beginning and an end and everything in between. And sometimes we are, depending on what situations we are in our lives, we are, we're all teared up and we're all on our knees and you know, we're in fetal position sometimes, just asking God to have mercy on us. And I realize that the, the lower we get, the higher we magnify God. 
Sometimes we have to get low in order to do that. Um, there is obviously each one of us will find our place in the way in what God's word speaks to us and how we, how we glorify God. In the time of David, when he had spoken to the people of Israel about building the temple, obviously they needed resources to do that. And those people came forward and they exalted God. And if you skip back to, ver to verses 6 and read there, then it says, Then the chief and father and princes of the tribe of Israel and the captains and th of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers and the kings worked, offered, offered willingly, and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams, and of silver 10,000 talents, and of brass 18,000 talents, and 100,000 talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. And the people rejoiced, for the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly, because with perfect hearts they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Now if you have, you can give. But if you give, and it doesn't change your life, it doesn't affect you, you doesn't give it great joy, it's you haven't glorified God, you haven't exalted God. So give with great joy. That's one of the ways we glorify God. Um, these, pe these people listened, and they heard David's plea and his desire, and they all felt the same thing. They all desired to do the same thing, to, go, to exalt God in their lives. Um, in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, we'll flip now as God, we talked about us exalting God. God, in turn, exalted Jesus Christ. In the book of Philippians 2, verses 9, and it says, Wherefore God also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. God, in turn, exalted his son, Jesus Christ, to a position that we should worship him. And that's our purpose, is to worship and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. It goes on in verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Our relationship with Christ is probably uh, is the one thing that exalts God the most because we're putting Christ first in our lives. Having Christ at the forefront of our lives is saying that we believe God's word, we believe everything he has called us to do, and we will honor him with our lives in receiving Christ. Um, there's other ways that we, in our everyday life, that we glorify God. We, uh, we talked about singing songs of worship. And when we, ex you know, we glorify God when we get into that subtle time of just worshiping Him. Um, our joyful service. Many workers were here this week. And uh, they labored and labored and labored, and they did it all in joy. And you couldn't find one person complaining about what they had to do. Everybody did it with great joy. Um, the people that did this preparation work, um, tremendous work went into getting prepared for this week's event. And everyone did it joyfully. No one ever bickered about what they had to do. And I think that's a spirit working through people. 
Um, in the book of Romans 12, Paul laid out here the Christian life and service. It's a little lengthy reading, so I'll go through it quickly if you would. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differed according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches, or on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Be that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, perfecting one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that, you, uh, that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another, mind not high things, but consented to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man's evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. It is, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if the enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For if, in, for in doing, in so doing, thou shalt heap coal and fire, a fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I think Paul clearly lays it out there: what our Christian life should be like. Preacher is preaching a series and consumed people, and I'm sure we have been listening attentively to what he's teaching. Um, in the book of Galatians, um, those messages are profound and right up there with what our Christian work and service should be. Um, that is exalting God. When we step out of this place that we worship and get out there and we minister to people's needs, everybody has a need out there. Everybody has a story if we would take the time to listen. Um, let us live as Christ asks us to live and do the things he has asked us to do. To be obedient to his call. Um, Brother Dan called me, as I said, about 10, left, about 10 something last night and asked me if I would take this class. And my first response was, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be in the hospital tomorrow morning or what's going to be with my father-in-law. And I says, I, I don't want to say yes and then get us in a bad situation. I can't. And I says, you know, 
I called my wife and I says, what's the situation like? She says, dad is stable. Um, they're back at home and so forth. I says, I texted him, I says, if you haven't decided and got somebody else, I'm still on. So I says, I'm gonna trust God that whatever needs to be done will be done and he'll prepare me for this morning. So he did, um, and I know his, he's gonna be faithful to see me to, to the end. Um, at that point, I says, I just need to get down and start preparing. So um, went to sleep and woke up early and got started again. But uh, praise God, um, I desired to serve him, and I desired to honor him with what I had, with what I was called to do this morning. Um, Paul's preaching was for us to preach Christ in all things. He had a call, and his purpose was to preach Christ in everything he did. You all know where Paul was and where he came from, what he did, and when he got his eyes set on it, that was his goal, to preach Christ, Jews, Gentiles, and everyone else in between. Um, and that was his sole purpose. He ministered far and wide to many people, um, and that's similarly, we are called to do that. In our walk, whatever we do, we have to preach Christ. In our prayers, when we pray, let's diligently ex ex exalt God. Let's find our position and understand our position. And it's important to understand our position to understand God's position, that he is, in the, as the, we read in... Um, in, in First Chronicles um, about God being the creator and everything is in his power. Um, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach him to pray, in the book of Matthew 6, Jesus instructed them, and that's basically the Lord's Prayer. Um, as a kid, growing up in South America, we said the Lord's Prayer every day, irrespective of your, your religious affiliation or anything. Everyone said the Lord's Prayer twice a day. When you get to school, and when you break for lunch, you can get back, you said the Lord's Prayer. And every child took comfort in that. Um, unfortunately, these days, I don't think that happens anymore, um, sadly. But the Lord's Prayer was said every day, and every child knew it, irrespective of what they did, or where they go to, if they go to a Hindu church or a Muslim mosque or wherever they go, they knew the Lord's Prayer ahead of everything. Um, Jesus taught them how to pray in Matthew 6, um, and I will read that. If you bear with me a second, Matthew. It says, After his manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, exalting God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the kingdom again, exalting God. And the power, exalting God, recognizing he's the all-powerful, and the glory forever. He is on the throne forever. Amen. I've shared a brief message like this last Sunday at the nursing home, and immediately as you start talking, um, there were several, you know the old folks are, they sit in the oil chair and they usually take a quick nap before we get started. Um, <laughs> you folks are wonderful here, but uh, we get to the nursing home and they desperately need to rest, and we love, we love them love sharing with him, and one uh, lady was having a difficult time um, that day, 
not sure what had unfolded before we got there. Shirley is her name. Um, and we got there and kind of spoke to her. She loves to sing. She loves to sing. There's another gentleman um, that usually likes to wear these army hats and things like that, which I love. Um, he immediately took off his hat. She, her countenance changed when we started singing. And it was just beautiful to see how the singing of hymns, the message and the Bible causes them to have that joy. And they're reminded once again that God is on the throne, that God loves them. They're reminded again that there is joy in worshiping God. There's joy in singing hymns. There is joy in being in his presence. Um, in conclusion, I, I will say, we exalt God in everything we do when we do it in the right spirit. We can do good things. In the world, you will see the world would do good things. There's many people that will do a good deed to someone. But have you really glorified God? Have you really exalted God in what you have done if you have not done it in the right spirit? If you expect a personal gain from it? That's not doing it to exalt God. There should be an unconditional desire to do it without consideration for what the rewards or repayment might be. We should do it joyfully. Let your words and your spirit as you go byways, speaking to people, talking to people, uh, be a testament for what God has done in your life. Bumped into a lady last night at the hospital and she was talking, and I noticed a little accent. Her voice I says, you're from Haiti, right? She says, yes, I am. <laughs> I says, well, I want you to come to church tomorrow. So I'm hoping she will be here today. I gave her an invite, and I says, you're going to hear gospel preaching if you come. She said, I'm looking for a church. I'm looking for a church for myself and my son. I says, then I think you just found it. You need not look for it there. So I'm hoping she'll be here today. And we're going to keep an eye out for her. And if you do, please encourage her. Her name is Fabiola. Um, and I said, you're going to love her preacher's wife, which is a, a big plus. Um, so keep our tracks in our pocket. I do have my jacket pocket, not here. Um, keep sharing Christ. I encourage you to let your spirit, let your countenance speak Jesus. Let Jesus show in our lives, you know. Um, I, I oftentimes think about it when my encounter in my, when I go out, what's my countenance, you know. Who's going to see me the way I act? And it's surprising sometimes, the people you bump into. I was in the parking lot one day by Home Depot and was waiting for somebody to get out, and I was just patiently waiting. And I, says, I said to myself, I need to keep my calm because somebody who I know is going to see me. <laughs> and lo and behold, Mrs. Aldridge was behind me, and she was waiting patiently too, and then she drove me and she waved. I says, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was thoughtful of the right thing at the right time. So um, that will happen all the way, every time. Um, but keep Jesus at the center of you. Might I encourage you? Um, there is, not everything is going to be glorious. Not everything is going to be you know, wonderful. Not everybody that you tell about Jesus is going to say, wow, I need that, or I need to be in church. There are going to be people that's going to resent it. There's people that's going to be very negative about it. But that's what we're called to do. We're not telling them our story. We're telling them what God, we're giving them the good news. And that's our purpose. Okay. Someone shared with me this week that, you know, their the children are getting saved. And it's so easy. I said, isn't it beautiful? You don't have to deal with an adult and take out what they know and then replace it with something. They're just fresh. It's so beautiful to talk to children about Jesus because they they just love it. They just love it. You know. Um, adults are a little dif different. We have to untrain them and retrain them. You know. But um, we've had a blessed week in every way. Um, I was able to make it here every night. 
and um, rejoiced in everything that was done. It was beautiful. Um, that will be my lesson for today. I hope it's encouraged you. I hope it's, um, God's words always encourages me. Um, hear it over and over and over again, no matter how much you pray to pray, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer. It makes a difference every time you say it. It challenges you. Um, if God's word is not challenging you, something is happening, or I should say not happening. It needs to happen. It needs to make a difference in life. It needs to stir you. It needs to challenge you. If we come into church here and we're not stirred by preachers preaching, something is not happening in your life. You need to examine that. You need to be stirred. You need to be moved. You need to be challenged. We can't come into this auditorium, sit here, hear a message, and leave being the same person. God's word does not leave you at peace. It's going to challenge you. So let it challenge you. If it hasn't, something's wrong with your spirit. You need to fix that. Okay? Let's have a closing word of prayer, if you would join me. Father, we thank you, Lord God, once again. Pray, Father, that your word, above all, Lord God, is encouragement to our lives. Pray, Father, that your word would challenge us, would move us, would stir us, Lord God. As we exalt the name of Jesus, Lord God, above all names, we praise you, Lord God, for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you will do, Lord God. We give you honor and praise today, Lord God, the God that you are. Your very word, Lord God, stirs us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, announcements in your bulletins. In your bulletin, I should say. Um, don't take for granted the weekly schedule. Always take a quick look at it. Um, there's men's prayer time and Bible studies and during the week's of events. Um, sizzling summer nights. Please uh, make sure you're attending that. It's been pretty awesome preaching so far we've had. Um, Facebook. Those that are on Facebook, please don't um, take your time. Be disciplined about your Facebook time. Um, church office closed. Um, I'm not sure if everybody was here when preacher announced last Wednesday that the, um, in an effort to conserve and save, uh, cut the cost down of operations, they're going to close the building down, so to speak. The church's offices and officers will be available satellite location homes, so phone calls will be received. Um, you can still um, uh, communicate with the church, and the meetings will be set up off-site or wherever it needs to be. Um, but we will not be heating this cooling this building in the summertime uh, for the next several weeks. Um, that information is in there. Um, that's actually from July 23rd tomorrow to August 10th. So keep that in mind. If you come to the church and you ring the doorbell, you might not get an answer. So, Rock and Grannies, if you are able and willing, they're looking for uh, older ladies to just rock the babies in the nursery. They need some help there. Beautiful things like new babies coming and more coming. And Deanna's got another one coming. And, um, or here, I should say. Um, but we need help there, and if you can, um, it would be a wonderful thing. Community Care Lawn Service, they do an awesome job. If you get out and you see their signs in the lawns that they're working on, they do a phenomenal job. Um, thank you. is a thank you once again from uh, those that have helped with the CSVBS. We could not have done it without each of you doing your part. Each donation and minutes spent in ministry will have an effect on these children's lives for eternity from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Um, the list of uh, preachers coming over the upcoming weeks. Today we have Pastor Richard Rossiter and the Kretzman family. Uh, the Kretzman are missionaries to Cuba. Um, if you do not know the Kretzman name, um, this is the couple that was driving in the Carolinas, hit an ice patch, had a, uh, a fatal accident that took the life of their little girl. And um, I'm sure their testimony would be phenomenal. Um, I'm not sure how it happened, but we received a postcard from them one day. And I said to her, 
do you know this family? And she said, yes, that's a Kretzmann. I said, ah, oh, yes, <laughs> okay. So uh, they are obviously ministering to other people through these events. Um, so they are reaching uh, far uh, in reaching people with the message of Christ, in, even in this tragedy in their family. So be encouraged, come out and hear them. I think they're going to have a phenomenal testimony. Next week we have Pastor Tommy Sexton um, and a little Jimmy Taylor and the Campbells. And in August we got uh, Pastor Kerry Nance and the Broken Arrow um, music by Broken Arrow Ministries uh, and Mark Dowdy. And on August 12th we have Pastor Scott Nail. Um, so please review your announcement, keep those close to your memory. Um, I think that will be it for now. You are dismissed. You always sing a song. Do you have a song? No, we always sing Draw Me Near. Okay. Could you lead us off? <laughs> would you? Okay. If you would. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord. If your cross thou hast died, draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross of Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Praise God.